So I've had the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus for around four months, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about if you should still purchase this device. All right, so let me give you a quick spec refresh. This does have a 6.6 inch dynamic AMOLED display. This is a 1080p display. It's 2340 by 1080. So it's not quite the 2K they used to give you on the Plus model, but still it's a very strong panel here. We do have ourselves a 4,700 milliamp hour battery on board, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in here, a 50 megapixel triple camera, which is capable up to 30 times zoom. And we also do have, you know, eight gigabytes of RAM. So you're not getting a full 12 like you'll get on the S23 Ultra. However, Samsung has done some pretty good optimizations this year. And with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it runs quite nice. Now, talking about the actual body in the build, I really enjoyed just kind of how nice this phone feels. Aluminum edges, but they kind of almost mimic and feel similar to like a stainless steel you would find on something like a 14 Pro Max. Now, also, I find these rounded corners a little more comfortable than the competition like the 14 Plus. It just feels a little bit better in the hand, just wraps in that palm a little nicer. And overall, I just gotta say that the phone just feels pretty comfy for its size in the hand. Now, the display has a pretty nice, you know, aspect ratio of 19.59, so it feels really, you know, wide enough. It doesn't feel like a skinny display like we used to see back in the days. And also, if you go over here to the Play Store, let's just turn off the dark mode really quickly, you'll see that this phone has minimal bezels. So, not very thick bezels, which is one of the best, you know, things I, I would say I like about the S23 line in general, especially the regular S23 line. And this one's no different. It's a very flat display. I've really enjoyed that as well. Just how flat it is. It's super easy to put a screen protector on this phone and it just feels very traditional and you don't get any of the cons that you would get with the, you know, the curved display. So if that's your thing, I think you'll really like the Galaxy S23 Plus. So one of the things I really liked about this phone as well is just the lightweight of it. You know, it, it's 196 grams. So a lot of people, including me, talked about how the 14 Plus, the competitor, was really, you know, light. Well, this phone is pretty much the same thing. It's very light as well. Gorilla Glass Victus front and rear, this is Victus 2. And um, that's pretty good stuff. You know, Nano SIM is available on here. So you don't have to worry about only having eSIM support. You know, you're pretty much SIM card on here. Also, you'll have speaker down here and then you'll have a speaker up here. So pretty good audio comes out this phone as well. I have to say it just feels pretty durable. You know, it has a IP68 dust and water resistance rating, something you're not going to find on some of the latest foldables. So just a standard slab, it's just really comfortable and really good optimizations of the software and performance that really made the S23 and S23 Plus incredibly enjoyable to use because this is the first year I've ever, I can ever say that this is like a lag free Samsung phone. I really have not seen any lag whatsoever. It's been Samsung's year when it comes to performance. So that makes me a little more excited about the Galaxy Z Fold 5, which is rumored to have a similar design as the Z Fold 4, not really pushing the envelope, but at the same time, this device right here being this fast in performance, it's gonna be nice to have a foldable that really matches up to something like this in performance. So S23 Plus, man, if you're looking for one of the best performing phones out there, this is right at the top of the hill. You're really gonna enjoy this. This does have always on display. Now I haven't bothered to customize it, although you can do a lot of customizations to that always on display, making it your own. And I was over here trying to tap the fingerprint like this is a Sony phone or something, but definitely, you know, in display fingerprint sensor over here is, pretty good as well. That is an ultrasonic, it's not an optical. And so what that means is you have a little bit better security. Also, this is a little bit more accurate, I would say when the screen is off, it's pretty easy to unlock. So that's pretty good as well. I do think the 20 by nine aspect ratio that used to be on the older phones being a little more narrow, made them a little more comfortable for people with smaller hands. But at the same time, the width of this phone makes this more enjoyable for consuming media and content because you have more content to be displayed across that width. So this is more of a proper big phone, in my opinion. All right, so four months later, let's talk about the software. Now the software on this phone, again, One UI 5.1, we do have Android 13. Samsung is really just the king of features, the king of never getting bored on your phone, I would say. Um, there is some other devices out there, specifically I'm talking about Xiaomi devices, are pretty close to this in terms of not getting bored. 
But Samsung is getting more polished with their ecosystem, along with having, you know, all their tried and true Galaxy features. I love to play around with themes, switch things up depending on the seasons and stuff like that. And when I get bored and I don't have to worry about getting some virus some, from some weird launcher in the Play Store or anything like that, I could just work with this stuff in the Galaxy theme store that's definitely been, you know, already pre-made for these phones in the Galaxy theme store. You also can combine a watch, Galaxy Buds, and one of the standout features, which is just really going crazy over everybody, is Dex. You know, you don't even need to buy a computer. Literally, just go get yourself a monitor, take the USB-C cable out the box, plug it into the HDMI, and bam, use your phone as a keyboard, use your phone as a mouse, you got yourself a computer. Samsung makes that really easy. And you can even connect wirelessly if you have a Samsung-based monitor or a monitor that can do wireless connections to smartphones. So it's really uh, pretty great here, pretty great stuff in the software. But one of the best things is that the we have the Edge panel is the multitasking abilities. You actually can have multiple applications open at once, really taking it up to a next level now. I personally don't believe humans are really good at having multiple things going on at once. I think it overwhelms the brain and stuff like that. But at the same time, in the pinch, when you actually need to do this stuff, it's not very often. But when you do, it's a nice to have feature. Like, for example, if you're trying to go check, you know, some calculation, you got to open your bank app or something like that, or you're trying to schedule an appointment on your calendar and you want to check the browser at the same time, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to have this stuff in the feature set of your phone. It really is quite good. So that's pretty great about this software as well. Software consistency has also been pretty good on this phone. Samsung's been pushing the software updates at least once per month. You know, sometimes they get a little bit delayed, like maybe a whole month delayed sometimes, but it's not very frequently. They've been doing a good job so far. Again, you know, this phone is like a five-year software phone, four to five year, depending on, but not all major. It's going to be some security in those last years. But I just really feel like you'll have enough software security and software support, and you'll you'll probably switch your phone before it runs out of support. So pretty good. It's still not as fast and efficient as iOS, which even puts out rapid security responses now and stuff like that. But, you know, it's better than Samsung of past. Let's just put it that way. And so talking about the camera system on here, I got to tell you, man, the camera system has been amazing, you know, especially having, you know, up to 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. There's not a lot of phones that are, you know, competing with this in, in the Zoom. A lot of them, you know, at this price are giving you similar specs are kind of cheaping you out on the Zoom, especially here in the US. I know there are Chinese-based phones that are really doing even more Zoom than this, but I'm talking about the US competition, the iPhone 14 Plus specifically. Usually people are gonna buy between this or a 14 Plus. Maybe they'll consider a Motorola Edge Plus, something like that, but I don't think a lot of people are aware of that phone. So it's kind of this or the 14 Plus or even a Pixel 7 Pro. And a Pixel 7 Pro can, I think, zoom about the same as this with AI, so that's pretty good as well, but they don't give you the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in there. And so all these features, Expert Raw, Pro, Pro Video, Night, Food, Panoramic, you bring it on. We have it, you want it, we got it. So basically anything you want in terms of the cameras, it's there. Now, if you take a look at the selfie camera, that's also pretty good. Aspect ratio is right there within camera. In addition to that, if we go over here to settings, you're gonna find yourself plenty of things to mess around with. Oop, getting out of focus there. I am using the Lumix camera today with their depth autofocus. Sometimes it messes up. Um, but anyway, you know, this, this camera is pretty darn good. And um, you can actually pinch out as well or come a little bit wider like that. So really do like that. And then you do have the timers up here. So overall, I mean, it's a really great package of an everyday consumer camera. I don't think most people are gonna be disappointed whatsoever. And I think it's a really clean design, the actual body. They don't stick too far off the body. They're clean, they just look good. It's just a simple, straight down camera design with pretty good results overall. Yes, four months later, this is a definite recommend in the camera department. So talking about battery life, we definitely get really solid battery life here all day easily. And this is one of the pros of having the 1080p display is that we're going to get longer battery life than if we threw in a 2K that sucks more battery and doesn't really benefit you too much. So I think this is a good move by Samsung bringing you here. But I just got to say, for me, it's pretty much an all day battery phone. Not much more, not much less. I'm charging it up every night. If I don't use it a lot and I throw out and I do some settings to make it last, it can go two days. 
Um, but a heavy user, which I think a lot of people who are going for this boy might be a little bit heavier side of using the phone because they wouldn't pay a thousand for this phone if they weren't. Um, you're you're going to get through a full day quite easily. Reverse wireless charging is on board as well, along with pretty fast charging. Nothing like a OnePlus in speed of charging or some of those Chinese phones that can go even long or faster. But it's still going to be pretty solid fast charging on here. Now, I will say that, you know, having USB-C type 3.2, in addition to that, having Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E, you are pretty much set for several years to come when it comes to the technology of connectivity. So that's also pretty darn good. At the end of the day, I want to wrap this up here. You can get this color Phantom Black. It's one of my favorite. I think it's one of the cleanest, classiest looking Samsung colors they've ever made. Cream, green, lavender, graphite, lime. It's all there for you. And you can you can actually snag this phone for around 750 to 800 bucks right now. They're throwing deals on these and they retail for like a thousand. So that's a pretty good deal right here on the Samsung S23 Plus. And it's just proof that maybe sometimes you should wait a little bit to get the strongest Samsung offerings out there because they do drop in price. Unlike Apple smartphones that stay the same price all year, even if the competition starts to blow them away. They keep their price the same. So Samsung, you could definitely get some deals. And if you wait to certain holidays, they throw promotions on those as well as trade-ins. So yeah, for me, this is a definite recommend. I think the entire S23 lineup was a definite recommend this year. And this one is no different. I just think it doesn't have the same popularity as the base S23 because that one's cheaper. And it's just kind of the base one everybody's going to go for when it becomes a little bit harder to justify this at the thousand dollar price point because the S23 Ultra is a little bit is definitely better and not that much more. But now that you're seeing discounts on this, this is a better buy now than it was when it came out four months ago. So let me know if you're going to pick up the S23 Plus if you're just not seriously considering any Samsung to the S24 models. If your Samsung is fine, just let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.